Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I like the sound. What happened? Oh, Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for life. For you are life. And we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for another Tuesday night to look into your word. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for clarity. We thank you for grace. And uh, we thank you that we will never be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Alright, so you are all welcome to our Tuesday evening teaching service. Whether you are here physically present or you are joining us online, it's a pleasure to have you with us online. God bless you for joining us. Amen. This evening, we are about to talk about love. Amen. We started this journey about two weeks ago and we continue tonight. Love is a language that everybody understands. Hallelujah. Everybody understands. Uh, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter the part of the world you are, we always want love. And uh, it's something that we understand. Amen. Although some people can sometimes be difficult to love, but... Uh, we are commanded to love all men because God loves us. Amen. When I was thinking about the love of God, somewhere last week, and then, you know, when we say that God does not have favorite children, God loves all of us. He gave all of us Jesus. You see, when, when, you, when you think that you can do something for God to love you more, what you are saying there is that when he was loving you with Jesus, he left some. Now you are doing something to get the rest. To think that you can do something for him to, to love you more is what it means that now God loves you 88%. Hallelujah. If you understand how much he loved you on the cross, you know that what do we see? Hallelujah. Amen. And to also think that you can do something for him to love you less. You see, you were in your worst state when he loved you. So, there's nothing that you can do that will affect the love because there's nothing you did that prompted or initiated the love in the first place. This love is the love that he has put in our heart according to the Bible in Romans chapter 5 verse 5. And we are able by his grace, if you allow him to love all men unconditionally. Hallelujah. We are able. I told you the story about my own self. How, I mean, you know, sometimes like me, I love my wife. The way I love my mother and I'm married, I love my siblings, I love my family and I'm married and the love that I was feeling for my wife, I said, where was the love? And I became a father. And the love, there's still more. And uh, by the, maybe I'll become a father again, like another, I don't know. Says, so where would the love come from for the, second, the, for the second baby? Where is it? Will it be manufactured? And I love all of you. I'm a, I'm a pastor of a church. And I, you guys don't know how much I love you. And I love all of you seriously. I'm telling you. I love that. One day, one of us called me at 12.15 a.m. that there's a situation in the hospital. 12, 12, 12 a.m. there. Say, I'm there. And I'm there. I'm hypocrite. hypocrite. If you call your pastor at 12, 12 15 a.m. It's prayer. And uh, if I prayed, if I pray with you and I wait and around one, I call to find out I have tried. Amen. Amen. But at that time, something moved me. And I went to the hospital. And I stayed in the hospital till 6 a.m. 
I'm telling you. And I didn't go alone. I went with my wife and another person. I'm telling you, see, something moved me. And me, myself, I was surprised. I'm telling you, when I went and I came back, came around, I got home at six now and come to sleep. I said, hey, you see, so yeah, last week, Tuesday, you know, this October, we have we've dedicated it to love. You say, we don't talk about love uh, for October. Maybe it may take us to November and to December. Hallelujah. But I don't know. You see, last week we said that before we became Christians, we loved people. And the, it was conditional love. Hallelujah. And I, I told you four things that guarded the love that we gave people. Do you remember? I said one, if they are family and friends, it's easy. We, we love them. And if it is convenient, I love you. I can do. So you call me at 12 a.m. What is convenient is I'll pray for you. And I have tried. I have called upon God for you. What do you need me for? But I had, you see, in the naturally, that one everybody can do. Do you understand? So you pray for the person, everybody can do. But you see, we learned last week that the new kind of love, the God kind of love in our heart, it does not think about you, ourselves. Love does not seek its own. So in that situation, my own was to sleep and I was tired. Hallelujah. And I was tired. So I, I, I went. Inconveniencing. Everybody can love if it is convenient. Hallelujah. But there's another kind of love that is agape, that is unconditional, that God has loved us with, that we must love people with. Hallelujah. Another condition that was attached to our love is if the person can return it. So we, we direct our love towards people that can easily give the love back to us. Hallelujah. So if there are two people in need and one person is likely to repay you one day when you are also tight, your, the natural tendency is to give to the person who can give back to you. Hallelujah. In the world, before we became believers. But this new kind of love is what we saw in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, that says that preferring one another, giving preference to one another. And we saw that 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24 says that don't seek your own. Seek another person's, I mean, well-being. Not seeking your own, but each one, the other's well-being. This is the love that the world does not know. Is the new kind of love, the God kind of love that he has put in our heart. So I told us last week that this is the love you must show people. Where it is not about us, but it is about people. Not seeking our own. And in First Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 4 to 8, we see the love does not seek its own. This is not the love that is in the world but the God kind of love. Last week I told us that life is not always about winning. In terms of winning, how the world defines winning. Sometimes our winning is in the losing. Jesus won on the cross through death. Hallelujah. And that is how the love of God wins. He looks so weak and foolish, blind and vulnerable, but all of its power is in the vulnerability. So strong like weakness. It's so strong like weakness. Hallelujah. So, we, I told you that everybody is, is, is a destiny and a project that God is building. And you must be wise enough to partner with God in building people's lives. And it is the happiest way to live when we, 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 we live for others. Jesus came to live for us. He came to live to die. Hallelujah. He came to live to die for us. So that those who will live after his death will also live for other people. Amen. 
we looked at a couple of them to say that invest in the life of people, be part of people's history. I said a couple of things that uh, I cannot go back to retreat all of them. And uh, this, this evening, I want us to look at a very popular verse in the Bible. I asked a question last week. I said that who, who determines how men relate with us or treat us? Give A, B, C, D. Do you remember? Do you remember? So who determines how men treat us? God, you, Satan, the people themselves, or who? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, the verse number 12. Matthew 7, 12. Look at this. The, uh, it has been called the golden rule. The golden rule. How many of you have heard the golden rule before? It's the, the golden rule. Everybody knows it. It says, therefore, you know, when you, hear, when you see therefore, it means you are coming from somewhere. Therefore. So he said, about, he said a couple of things. And he said, therefore. Whatever, say whatever, you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophet. This is the psalm of the law and the prophet. This is the salvation of the law and the prophet. Do unto other men as you want other men to do to you. So who determines how people treat us? Who? Who? Oh, say it. Hallelujah. This is, this is serious. You do to others as you want others to do unto you. In the, in the uh, message translation, you know how it is rendered over there? Can we have it? Here is a simple, here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior. Ask yourself, what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. Add up God's law and prophet, and this is what you get. It's so simple. But you know something? This is not something that the old man could have done. The old man cannot do that. And until we renew, we renew our mind. This is what all God wanted to tell them. All that Moses wrote is this. You sit down. Don't be in a hurry to expect people to do anything for you. Sit down. That's the first step. Ask yourself. Don't ask anybody. What do you want people to do to you and for you? Write it down. Then you be, you see, this is how we start being innovative. This is the mother of innovation and proactivity. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you something very serious. If you want to be proactive and innovative in life, it starts with this. You sit down, grab the initiative, and start doing it for them. Hallelujah. This is in Matthew. My brothers and my sisters, this is the summation of the law. So God has given the power of how people treat you. He has put it in your own hands. Hallelujah. 
before I continue, I need to take my time to explain something about this verse. Now, it is not, the, you see, the motivation factor is not that you want people to do it back to you. When you start on that note, you have failed. And I'm going to prove that to you as we go on. Now, please, when you read the Bible, you come to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Men look on the outside, but God looks on the inside. Please listen to me very carefully. This is the foundation of what I'm about to teach you today. Men look on the outside, but God looks on the inside. Now, God deals with us according to grace. God deals with us from, his, from our spirit. He is spirit. And he deals with us from our spirit. There is total, absolute perfection and holiness in our spirit. It's flawless. That is where and how God deals with us. He deals with God is spirit. He deals with our born again holy spirit. Now, that is how God deals with us. Not according to our performance. Don't let religion or anybody deceive you. However, you must understand that that is grace. Not dealing with you according to your performance. But men do deal with us according to the outside. So men deal with us according to performance. Hallelujah. Men deal with you according to your performance. Now, grace has made everything available for you. You are a king, you are rich, you are everything. Everything that you ever need, God has made available for you in his son by grace in your spirit. Philemon 6 will let you understand that. Now, please listen to me very carefully. When we read the book of John chapter 1, Verse 17 and 18, where that grace, this grace, men experience it, God, men experience God's grace through a man called Jesus. Now, men teach us the grace of God. Listen carefully. Men, it is a man, the Bible said that the law, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Jesus was a man. God's grace is dispensed through men. It is unmerited. It is unlimited. It is unearned. But you realize that man is always in partnership with God. And everything that God is ever going to do for you through and by his grace, he's going to do it through men. He's going to do it through men. That is why how we treat men matters. Hallelujah. So although you don't work for his grace, that is how faith comes in. You see, when we read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, we were saved by grace, but it was through faith. And the faith is our responsibility. Hallelujah. The faith is a gift, but it's, this, it's usage. is man's responsibility. Hallelujah. So, the grace of God, you are not earning it. But you see, the, our relationship with men and how we treat men matter a lot because men don't deal with you from your spirit. Although we are instructed that know ye no man after the flesh, not all men have understood that yet. And so, man, that's why your boss will not promote you keke, by grace. Yet, the appraiser work and industry and effort is needed. Then, you receive the grace of God. Then, you realize that through that, you get much more than even what you have done. That is grace. It doesn't mean you have worked for the grace. It is on end. But men and how we treat them matter. Otherwise, the grace of God and all of his provision in his son that is available to us, we should be enjoying all of them at the, I mean, all the time. 
That is why we must understand the, the principle of living between the balance of faith and grace. Some people think that how they treat men do not matter. They love God, but they do not love men. Hallelujah. So God says that whatever you want men to do unto you, you do unto them. Now, look here. We always don't get it through the same people. We always don't get it through the same people. Watch here. Let me show you something in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will repay you. You know, God says that whatever you are, whatever you want men to do for you, you do it to them. So it is a man that will do it for you. But it is the Lord who is doing it through a man. He will repay you. Now, how does God pay you? He will pay you through men. Hallelujah. So who is doing the payment? God. That is why when you are doing the thing, Although you are doing it unto man and man will do to you, man should not be your focus. So, Colossians chapter 3, verse 27, we say that whatever you do unto men, do it as unto the Lord, because he is the one that repays. But he repays with and through men. That is how we get the grace of God. The grace of God is not a tree sitting somewhere that you go and pluck, or it does not happen in vacuum. When a man is dealing graciously with you, yes, Jesus came to show us grace. He was a man. So men will dispense the grace of God to men. Hallelujah. Understand that. So you know that it is you have the power, you have the seed to determine how men treat you. And you must know that it is God who is treating you. Now, you have to treat men how you want God to treat you. Hallelujah. You have to treat men. What if God treated you the way you treat men? Hallelujah. What if God treats you the way you treat men? Sometimes, even how we, how, what if God even treats you the way you treat yourself? Hallelujah. That is where mercy will come in. Hallelujah. You know, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 32 to verse 40 something, there's an instructive pa passage over there that says that the king was hungry, was destitute. The king was thirsty. Remember the goat and the sheep? He said that anything that you do for these people you do it for me. You do it unto me. My brothers and my sisters, this verse is still in the Bible. When we do unto men, we are doing unto God. When we are ignoring men, we are ignoring God. It is as simple as that. He said that he will tell you that I was hungry. God was hungry. He said, I was thirsty. I was a stranger. I was sick. But it, is, it was not God. It was a man. So, and he said, he told them at the end, he said that, for I was hungry. And you gave me food. I was thirsty. And you gave me a drink, not water. You know, this, this, this drink, you have to watch it. Uh, it's not water, not cheap water. One, 20 person. I was a stranger. And you took me in. Hallelujah. And they say, Ah, Lord, when? He said, As you are doing it for human beings, you are doing it for me. When did we see you a stranger? We took you in, blah, 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 blah. And the king, the king is hungry. Listen, there are a lot of hungry folks around. Yesterday, I was buying something from a shop in my neighborhood, and a young man came to see, Come, he said, Come, 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 so in my quit chin was so contra dear ba was if it no pay come to me yeah come to me eh no son here I'm telling you just some few meters from my house 
and there was some beans, some beans still be in my house. Now, I don't know who would eat. And just on my street, just some less than 50 meters on my street, somebody was there. I said, oh, I come here, yeah. I took something I gave to the person. I took one CD. I said, ah, pastor, one CD, I come. <laughs> one CD, come, come. I had to ask some. Hallelujah. He was a stranger. I don't know him. You see, this person, he has no way to give, do it for me again. How? When we turn, I, I was looking for him. I didn't even really see him. I said, hey, I could have why you now. See me again. You see, so you're not me, yeah, man. No, no, me, yeah, my ready. Hallelujah. Oh, see, I want when did I see you? My brothers and my sisters, you see, we we have to understand that the good that we do to people, we do unto the Lord. And if we are ignoring people, we are in essence ignoring the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, what are some of the things that we want others to do for us? What do you want? What do you sit down and grab the initiative? What do you want people to do to you? When we read Matthew chapter, chapter 5, verse, verse 44, it is, it is put over there very simply. Like the way we have to treat our enemies. We want people to bless us. See, bless. No, let's start with love. Love. Bless. Do good. Pray. How many of you wish that everybody was praying for you? Everybody, if, will you be excited if everybody here walked to you and said that this morning I prayed for you? Will you be happy that every day we are praying for you? Listen, grab the initiative. That's your name. Are you, did you pray for Loretta today? How about Henry? Eh? How about me? My don't answer. Love. Love, Nietzsche says, share. In this verse, we all have, you see, we can categorize everything we need from people in this verse. And our enemies even deserve it. Love them. Love is share with them. Share your food and water and your drink with them. How many of you would be happy if we are all sharing our food and water with you? Listen, it is very simple. Would you like that? Do it for people. Hallelujah. Bless them. Bless. 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 And do good. Say do good. What is good? Anything. Can, 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 can somebody mention one thing that is good? Do good. What? Like what? So you don't, you, you don't even know what giving. What giving is you have said do good. You can't do good without giving. Do good. Do good. Evans. Money. Give money. How much? Now, as you have come to church, if you, if, if you close and somebody gave you 20 cities, will you like it? You like it. Grab the initiative. Find somebody and give them 20. <laughs> and as I'm saying, everybody, some, a lot of people, they are thinking that I am the one that they must give to. So everybody should come and give to me. You see, that is the problem. You are still in the center. Hallelujah. What are some of the good things? Do good. Do good. What is good? Forgive people. How many of you want to? You know, when I see some people who struggle to forgive, you know, ask a question. Have you, you see, if you are struggling to forgive somebody, the question that we ask, we ask you is that, won't you offend anybody in your life again? Is that how you want people to treat you when you offend them? Or you have stopped offending people? The way I was trying to say, that's the question. Will you offend somebody tomorrow or next year? 
2030, will you offend somebody? Will you want to be forgiven if you offend? Grab the initiative today when somebody offends you. Will is the people? Hallelujah. It's very simple. Pray. Pray. Prayer. Grab the initiative and do it for people. Whatever. Whatever. Listen, you see, it is not about, now listen, you see, what we are talking about is not casino. It is not casino. So, it is not like if you give one CD, you will get one CD. If you get two, two CD, you give, you give two CD. You see, it is, it is not something that we do because we are going to get. We do because God says we should do. Mind you, the love we show is as he has loved us. And he, is, he must be the reason. Now listen. It means that if you at your level, maybe for giving, for giving money, how the, the best or the biggest sacrifice you can make is to give two CDs to somebody. Listen. If you give that two CD to somebody, you have given to the Lord. And who is going to pay you is the Lord. Now, don't expect it from that same person, number one. Don't expect it from the same person. You give forgiveness to this person, you also for, 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 for offend the person. He doesn't forgive you, then you are mad. You know something? Maybe 30 other people will forgive you in the future. Or maybe the thing that you forgave is you forgive a gossip. Maybe one day you'll be forgiving a murder. Hallelujah. It is, you see, and God has, it means that God has given all of us the seed to sow, to live the life you want to live. So it means that, listen, if you give one seed to somebody, you have thought about somebody and you have given your widow's might and how much you can give. You have given it. We, we, do you know what you have done? It means that you have, you are, you are ready to receive any amount of money from anybody. That is grace. So, if you are receiving grace in return, my brothers and my sisters, when we do good, the only thing that God gives back to us is grace. And grace is giving us what we do not deserve. When you read the New Testament, the Bible says he is able to make all grace abound to you. So, if I give you five CDs, I don't expect you to give him back five CDs. Or I don't expect any man to give me back five CDs because I gave unto God. And God can use anybody tomorrow or next year to give me five million. That is grace. But you know something? It started by how I loved man. It started by how I also dispensed grace because the person also did not deserve it. That is why you see when you, when you treat men how you want God to treat you, then you, you treat the undeserving with grace so that you can forgive everybody and everybody can get anything from you. Nothing from you to anybody is too big because nothing from God to you is too big at any time and at any place. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we give, it is grace we get back. If it is God who is going to give back to you, he will give you grace. And grace will always give you much more. Grace will always give you much more. But you know, the thing is, you don't determine who, when, and how. You leave it unto God. And don't get frustrated by the people who do not return your love. Because let me show you something in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. You will love this. Listen, let on now. It is true. You know, God will say, whatever you want men to do to you, do to them. Abi. 
Is that not what we saw in Matthew? Let's go to the epistles. Where the rest, where our, our this thing is. Matthew is for the your friend. Look at Matthew. It is true that people don't always return love. But God said that if you give love, you get love. But he said that if you do it for people, you've done it for the king. Listen, if you, if, if you did something for the president of Ghana or the president of the United States or the king of the Asante kingdom or anything, and they have not given back to you, will you, will you feel bad? You feel bad. Look, but look at Paul. Paul says that, and I will verily gladly spend and be spent for your souls. My brothers and my sisters, this is, this is the happy life. Be spent for people. Listen, I have decided to spend my life to make sure that you live in light. I have, spent, I have decided to spend my days to make sure. Listen, when you are sleeping, I'm not sleeping. Listen, it's a happy way. And when you sit there and you are writing, I am happy that the, the sleep and the comfort I denied myself has put a smile on the faces of people. On the internet, people are listening. On Facebook, on YouTube, people are listening today. Someday, many years to come, the little comfort I, I, I denied myself, I spent for the souls of people listening. Look at Paul. Maybe 13 years to come, this thing I'm preaching today will be on YouTube. In 13 years to come, one of your cousins, brothers, sister in secondary school will come on vacation and will be chance, will chance on something on YouTube one day. And after 13 years, it will, it will bless somebody. It will save somebody. Listen. The, the, the easiest way to live a horrible, disappointing, unhappy life is to live for self. Look at Paul. Or say, I will very gladly spend and be spent. What do you say? Spend and be spent. Just say, I'm spending my life, my blood, my sweat, my sleep, my money, my life. I'm poor. At another point, he said, my life, Paul said, my life is poured out as a sacrifice. Not for my soul. Which soul are you, are you being spent on? My, at least I can tell that my soul is being spent on you. Whose souls are you being spent on? How much is your Christianity costing you? Gladly spend and be spent. But look at the semicolon. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. Hey! This is real. I can identify with Paul. Not when you are chasing the girl and the girl says no. Not that one. It's not spending and being spent. You had the motive. You were just disappointed. It's called broken heart. But when you are doing something for your family and they cannot see it. When you, are, when you are sacrificing for people and they don't recognize it. They are not in the pain past that. You see, when they are not recognizing it, it's okay. But when their life shows that you are doing nothing. Or see, the more I say, if I love less, then they they ought to, they, 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 they they, they love me less. But if the more I do, the less that they love. Is it not God who said that, do unto men what you want them to do to you? Did Paul give love? I said, the more I love them, the less I'm loved. But you know something? Before you go and love men, before you go and give to men, before you go and spend and be spent on men, fundamentally, understand that God, who will give back to you, loves you unconditionally. Paul never doubted God's love. Listen, the only thing that will fool your love for men 
should never be what they give back to you, but what God has given back, what God has given you already. His all, his love in his son on the cross. Paul, that is why Paul did not stop. Paul did not stop. They beat him 30, 40 minus one strokes five times. After the first one, he didn't stop. Shipwreck, fastings, imprisonment several times, ab abasing and abounding, putting his life in danger on sea and under the water. Listen, nothing stopped him. Why? The people were still loving him less. But he was loving more because his love was not about him. It was not even about the people, but about he who loves him abundantly. So your, your less love, people's less love should not affect your more love. Look at Paul. See, the less I am loved. But Paul understood that if I give to the poor, I have lended unto God. You see, the verse that, uh, uh, is it Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17? If you read it in other translations, other translations will say alone. So you have given God alone. Hey! I think the message in NLT and those translations will put it in a, in a way that you will love. The business people. Or say, Mercy to the needy is a loan to God. And God will pay those loans in full. He said, it's a man who will pay you. But it's God who is paying you. It's a loan to God. How, how much does God owe you? How much loans? Eh? Can you imagine if God... So the guy, the money I gave the guy yesterday... God, they owe me. Uh, and who would die in America? Is it not enough that he says he will pay? When you are, when you are demanding it, he has doubt. He said, I'll pay. Next year, they, uh, I'll pay him. Said, God, eh? Look, this verse is incomplete. After. You know what that should have been? Something there that at least it is coming, you know that it is coming. He said, I'll pay. You know, like you owe somebody. You go to the person, and the person says, I had a missing media, missing media, I had a media, only me fear, I had a meeting, me go baby, I will pay in full. I say, if I'll pay in full, it's alone. I'm not saying that I don't owe you. Who's runner? Betia. So go, then you go. Listen. If you were in need, if you were, if you were in need, will you, would you, do, how many of you need the Lord to show you mercy? How many of you need mercy? How many of you have given mercy today? That is the thing. This is the thing that people stretch into legalism and karma. They are so wrong. Hallelujah. It's a loan. And God pays back those loans in full. When? You know, I mean, where are the bankers? All the bankers are not here this evening. I mean, Charlie, every loan, is that two years? They don't give loans like that. <laughs> Interest rates are guaranteed. Charlie, what are you going to take a loan from a bank? Charlie, these days, eh? Hmm. One of my friends called me and said he's going to take a loan from a bank. The forms they gave him to fail. He said he will take a loan again. <laughs> he said he will take a more fun with this guy. One loan. Hey, 4,000. People 4,000. Hey, 4,000. Musica Mwena, Mu 4,000. That's me. Yeah, that's a wise. That's a guarantee. That's a witness. It's a thing. So he said, three years. There's an interest. You are changing your science to home. There's time. But God's loan is not like that. He said he will pay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, God does not give up on us and we should not give up on people. It is certain 
that all the people that we do good to will always not pay us back. Paul's case was giving more love and getting less love. My brothers and my sisters, if you are giving more love to somebody and they are giving you less love, so is it God who is paying you with the less love? <laughs> if God start paying you, if God start paying you, can you imagine if God start paying you? Eh? You've been showing mercy to people from 2016. Every day when you are coming to church, you have a gift for somebody. You've never attended a service so that you didn't give anybody a gift. Can you imagine, and you are doing it for God, not because you want them to do anything to you, but by the end of the year, you have given everybody in the church a gift. It's 365 days. We are about 100. You, you can decide that, like, you see, I told you last week that decide to, to, to letter, I mean, pockets of goodness, just mercy, random act of kindness, random, random, spirit-led act of kindness all over the place. Listen, when God decides to pour his grace upon you one day, that's when one day something will happen to you and you break down and you cry. That is the king paying you his loan. Do you want man to pay you or you want God to pay you? Do you want man to pay you or you want God to pay you? But do you know some do you know why men pay us? Because we don't do it unto God. But if you do it us unto the Lord, He will pay you. Hallelujah. But the payment should never be the motivation. Let me show you in Luke chapter 6, verse 34 and 35. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, the verses that you never hear a lot of pastors preaching with. And if you lend to those who you hope to receive back, what credit is it to you? Lending and hoping to receive back is non score, it's no credit. You are doing business. It's like you have dollars where you used to go and take CDs. It's peace that you are hoping, hoping to learn to see that. Then you see, this is the way the world gives. Hallelujah. That is the way the world, and we all know how to give that. We are doing that when we are not born again. Or see, if you lend to those whom you hope to receive back, and we have all loved hypocritically like that before, so, in the Good Samaritan's case, the, the Levite, the, past, the priest, and the first, the, the first two people, uh, how would they receive back from this guy? Ah, you know that what the, what, who, the, the man that was called good, the Good Samaritan, what if the guy was an arm robber? Do you care? An arm robber does not deserve health care. He deserves it. In our world today, when we catch a thief, we beat them. But those who beat the thieves, they are all thieves. If, if that question was asked, any mob action, people involved in mob action, anybody that hasn't done, has not stolen before, kill the man. But a young woman, a person who is a and come a person who is a no be we are there. What more do they need? Do, they are the people that pray to kill their enemies. They can kill the people can kill. Hey, Evans. They have they, they, you park your car, they take it the battery. <laughs> it is 400 Ghana cities. Because of that, he must die. You pack back 400 Ghana cities. You don't care. Christ is in you, his love is in your heart. You see, then you, you watch the shekha tie. Now the 400 cities. And you put him inside. Then you put petrol. Then you, and you take blog. He used to hit his ear. 400 cities. And I pause and I ask, have you stolen before? Or because you were not caught like him. Look at the thief beating the thief. Do you not care 
how that young man, you know, maybe if you were living under his his life conditions, Nankao, you rob a bank. Uh, why would a, a young man like you come and steal this? Have you ever thought that it is as an opportunity for you to even show the love of God and preach to the person? See, a honey day, no. That's why we are entering the agape realm. The guy is lying by the roadside. Whether he went to steal and he was beaten or not. Did, he, did you hear him asking, who, who, who are you? What did you, go, what did you steal? Why did they beat you? Why are you here? And did you see him? Fine boy, you, you go to school. See you people, you people, because you see, your father took you to school. And you have a car, you bought a battery. You see, who, 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 why? Fine boy like you. Moon page, you ma, moon page, you ma, in a, 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 I saved him. Trend for a few views and likes and comments. I didn't see any 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 pastor or prophet, anybody. The one they were doing, they, they, they never took pictures. But God's spirit wrote for us today. We are preaching about Abraham and everybody. They did good all over the place. Paul and all of them did good. They didn't take pictures. But God took notice. Today we are preaching about them. Their pictures are in several thousands of Bibles all over the world. But we, we take pictures. What the coin? I always ask, are you a politician? Now you need some votes. Who do you want to make a point to? Can people be poor for you to help them? So if I'm a poor man, I come to you, there's a camera that you are giving me and you want, I won't, I won't take it. Will you take it? Because I will not always be there. You've been there before. I want to be there. Hallelujah. For you hope. You see, the thing is not the giving. It is the, listen, I've always told you that God examines the heart of the giver more than the gift. The giver is always important to God than the gift. Listen, there's nothing wrong with giving to people who can give back to you. There's nothing wrong. Eh? So me, I can give back to you, so you give me. Eh? Who can't I give back to you? Every day I'm giving to you. Every day I'm giving to you. I'm giving to you. Eh? You see, if you, if, you, if you give me money, I can give back to you. So is it wrong if you give to me? No, that is not wrong. You know the wrongness? It is the hoping. It's the hoping. But it's not God who also said that what you want them to do to you, grab the initiative and do to them. But then he's saying that, don't grab the initiative and do to them with the motive that they'll do back to you. Hey, they will love you less. So go and ask Paul. And say, every day I'm coming to visit you. You don't visit me. Is that why you have stopped the visiting? Uh, you are visiting so that I will visit you back. Do you know why we do good? Because it is good to do good. And God is good and I'm a good person. And I do good. Period. Should I repeat myself? I said we do good because it feels good to do good. Listen, I tweeted last week. I said you will never feel, you will never feel like doing good. But it feels good to do good after you have done good. Some don't feel like do, 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 you never feel like feeding your enemy. Ima, have you felt like feeding your enemy before? If you are waiting for that feeling, it's not feeling. It's not a sensual thing. It's a spiritual thing. We are led to do it. We do it because it's a commandment. We do it because God says we should do it. We do it because He's a good God. He lives in us, and He has commanded us to do good, and we do good. It's period. If it is to hope, you see, it is the hoping to receive back. Otherwise, rich people to deserve gifts. And you must give to big people. And sometimes, if you are strategic and you are wise, you will measure and calculate and give to people who are your friends. I'm telling you. 
You know, sometimes I, I, I have, I've counseled a lot of people who have been given to several men of God and several, you say you have a, you, like, if or say, I'm a despite this, your father, will you ever give him a gift? Be, your, your, your question will be harsh, like, have you ever felt like your boss, you're not giving your boss a gift before, you're not giving your pastor a gift before. Now, pastor, then I'm the best man. You know, people who look like they have everything don't receive gifts. And those around them who do not show them this love, they are doing themselves so much harm. Hey. Ah, so, you know, who, who 20 Ghana, no? I also the shame of the my pastor and also boss. You see, that is what you have. You see, there's a little ego problem that you must diagnose. You, feel, you see, you are proud, though. But listen, what is wrong? Your boss knows your salary. And it is his birthday. And you bought what? You see, Utimia Din. And now say, Uye, Uya Humaswo. I'm telling you, every rich man, you can give a gift to the president. And you know something I come to notice about life, Abna? It's not always about the, the price. Oh, hey, we can buy you something, and when you see it, you think that it's thousand Ghana. Hey! I've seen, I've seen things that look expensive. It's not always a China more. Yeah, there are places, come. Come and let us. Hey, you can buy something. And you'll be wearing it. And everybody will see, they will see that it's expensive. But when they say it's expensive, you say glory to the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes, I'm telling you. See there, you see one in the low one and high. You see, can, the ladies, they can wear some hair. They can wear something. Charlie, one day, Isaac, hey, sorry, Marvel. I went to circle. And I saw some shoes on the ground. Nice, nice shoes. I saw a lot of people wearing some before. And I was asking the prices. And I was shocked. Isaac, I was shocked. Joshua, have you been there before? See, this one, he said that the shoe, I can't even mention the price. Maybe somebody is wearing some. <laughs> ha! Hey, guys, he said, it doesn't take much. I'm telling you. Where there's a road, there's a way. They say, go and give your, your father is a big man. Your father drives a V8. And you, you walk. And it's his birthday. So you have given up. What can I give daddy? HBD. See, if you send me some, you won't like the reply. HBD, bro. Lazy boy. Lazy boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, there's nothing wrong in giving to people. Who, but why do you give to God? Who is richer than God? The earth is his friend. <laughs> you, you give to God, but you can't give to a rich man. You see, you're a hypocrite, eh? but you don't know. But you see, you see, people who are hypocrites who don't know, they say everybody is a hypocrite. When you see somebody calling one or two people a hypocrite, you are looking at a hypocrite. Ah, you give to God. When they say offering, you come and give. God. You see, you don't know God. You have succeeded in giving to God. When it came to pastor, you say that you gave God, when they pass the offering basket, you put one CD inside. You put two. You put three. You put. God. You don't know God. You gave to him. Now, you want to give to pastor. And you are shy. But you are not shy at God. But you are shy at the man of God. The pastor will see my 50 cities. How can I give pastor 50? My boss, my dad. Like, it's your daddy's birthday and you put 150 Ghana CDs. What if it is credit? 
You are, are you also bereft of ideas? Now, when you are giving a big man 150 CDs, you feel shy. But when the, it is converted to MTN credit, you feel big. Hallelujah. But like I said, it is not in giving to people who can give back. Otherwise, we won't give to God. It means that giving to God and hoping to receive back is not even the game. It is giving to him in the name of giving to him. Not because it's a golden rule. Otherwise, hey, if you do that, you better come and you. She, you are shame comfort don't make real feel. Hey, I am comfort for part of the money money to a cow. But look, or see, what credit do you have for that? For even sinners learn to sinners to receive as much back. I always warn you about you are the righteousness of God. You are not a sinner. Stop giving as a sinner. But some sinners, they have graduated from this place. Oh. They don't give to receive back. The next verse. Now, love your enemies. Do good. Do good. Now listen. Do good and lend. What? Can we read the next, the next verse? The next line. Return. It's not a Saturday return. But hoping for nothing in return. Listen. So, it is this. We start from here. With hoping for nothing in return, you look at what you want people to do to you. Grab the initiative. Do it to them. But as you do it, do it like God and unto God for he said that, and your reward will be great. You see, you are, you, are, you are hoping for nothing in return. The greatness in your reward is in the hopingness of the nothingness in returnness. It means that if you are hoping for something in return, your reward will be small. Hoping for nothing in return, so how will it be great? It's not my business. Listen, I have decided to, to, to dedicate my life to raising people up, to showing people mercy, to be part of people's history, to be there for people when they are broken because it feels good. It gives me joy. Listen, if you like, when you are sad, go and find somebody and make them smile and see where the sadness will go. Nothing takes care of our, our, our sorrow and our loneliness and, and the, the weakness like showing love. That's a better way to live, my brothers and my sisters. Making people smile. How we treat men matter because they are the gateways for us to receive and access the mercies of God. My brothers and my sisters, listen, if we do to all men and they give to us back equally, then we don't need faith. Then we don't need faith. We must love by faith. God loves us by faith. Otherwise, you see, everything that is not of faith is, is sin. You can be loving and they sin. My brothers and my sisters, somebody give, somebody can, in First Corinthians chapter 13, or see, if I give myself to be bent, hoping for something in return, and it is not because of love. For what can, what, listen, that is one of the most dangerous verses in the Bible for me. First Corinthians chapter 13. Hey! I thought you to be on the screen. Or see, maintain as you, how can I give myself to be bent? What again can motivate me if it is not love? But there's something that can motivate somebody to give himself to be bent. One of them is he wants to receive something back. And I've known that. Even though I've bestowed all my goods. To, this, is, this is to the poor. It is not to the people that can give back to us. Now, this time, even to the poor. But, Loretta, 
My point is, can somebody give all their goods to feed the poor and it is not love that is motivating them? It's dangerous. Yes. Yeah. And it is not love. Then what will it be? To get a job. Yes. To get fruit of the womb. To what? All the reasons why how we preach that come and give this and get that. Come and give this and get that. Sometimes when it is harvest time, it is when they are doing the Kofi Niyama. It is just so that when we finish, you know that I am there. I am there. That's the, eh? the amount that they give like that, if they say give it, nobody will know. Can they give it? So what did they give to? They gave to their ego and their pride. Can they walk to the priest office and give that 50,000 glass of water? 50,000. And if the people, everybody will not be seated and you rise and they will see that it is you. <laughs> Rita, it's dangerous. Can somebody give all their goods? And I give my body to be burned, but I have no love. It profits me nothing. I have no love, Mr. Yesterday. I didn't do it for God. I didn't do it in the name of God. I didn't do it for love. God is love. There's no profit. But there can be profit. The Bible said that when you give, now back to Luke. If you give and don't expect nothing in return, that is giving for love. That is giving by faith. My brothers and my sisters, in conclusion, I came to tell that your faith worketh by love. Faith worketh by love. And in Romans chapter, I have a verse here. Let me quote it and close. Romans chapter, this chapter 13, verse 23 or something, or 14, 23. It says that whatever is without faith is sin. So it means that faith worketh by love. So if it is not by love, it is not by faith, and it is a sin. Listen, or say, hoping for nothing in return. When you give to the poor, hope for nothing in return. Although he has said that, it, that is why it is not karma. That is why it is not legalism. Another person can preach this and, and excite your, your greed eh? and, and preach karma that nyami be tiawka inti nyami ne tiawka no nyami tiawka if God repays, what does God repay with? Does God repay with evil? And whatever is not of faith is sin. So you can be given to the rich or the poor and it is sin. Because you didn't do it by faith. Because it is not by love. That is why we say we should walk by faith. Because or not all the people we do good to will always return it. So we need faith. And faith is not in people. Faith is always in God. That's why we need faith to give. Because we give unto God. We give by faith. So I let me make a strong that if you are giving and we expecting something with them, you are not giving by faith. You are not giving by faith. If you are not expecting anything, you are giving unto the Lord. You are giving by faith, and your reward will be great. I'm telling you, Hallelujah. Amen. Human beings forget. You forget also. You forget also. And sometimes people do not even know that they haven't even thanked you. People do not even know that you think that they are ungrateful. Charlie, I cry yes, you that people they forget things. So. so if you say that your your goodness is predicated on people's response to your love, you always be hurt and you stop doing good. And when you stop doing good, do you know what you have done? You haven't done anybody evil. You are only doing yourself evil. You are shutting God's access 
of grace into your life. Because you always look at people. People will look at your performance. And this performance, the outer performance, it is also your kind. That is why, you know, you know, when they say wedding, say yeah, yeah, wedding be our own back. People are watching, you know. Huh? They say, this, oh, you know, every day, so you are always be there for people. Give a whole work in swag talk. You don't know your wedding day what will happen. Eh? Your wedding day, you don't know what will happen. Child, the way it's raining in October. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go and build people up. Stand by down. Now, I end with a quote from John Wesley. How many of you know John Wesley? He said this. Write it down. You are, uh, I've not started the quote. Do know that you are not God. Don't be burdened about the many people that you can or you have to show goodness to. You are not God. You can't help everybody. If you have a heart like my heart, I, I stopped doing that about six years ago. Hey, I used to, I can see people on the street and cry. How many of you have felt sad for people because you can't help them? And it almost made you cry. Oh, raise your hand. First, I used to feel bad, though. But that is not what you must do. You see, you are not God. You can't help everybody. But John Wesley said something, and I want to read it to you. And it's my conclusion. He said this. Anyway, in Vapo. Or see. By, or see. Do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you can you can't feed all of us though. you can't feed all of us you can't pay all of us our rent listen all the beggars in Accra you can't, you can't, listen, you can't, see, when you are traveling from here to, you go to Macra, you see every, every, every traffic light, you see blind people begging. You can't give to all of them, but in your own way. <laughs> <laughs> but make sure that at least one of them you give. So he's, maybe, can I, re can I repeat it? Yeah. It's one of the most profound statements I have seen. Or say, do all the good you can by all the means you can. So the means. In all the ways you can. Ways. Channels. In all the places you can. At all the times you can. To all the people you can. As long as you can. You are not God. Now you can't die for them. Listen, you can't, you can't feed all of us, but you can feed one person. You can't visit everybody, but you can visit one person. So they say, brighten the corner where you are. Hallelujah. As long as you can. In all the places you can. Where? To all the people you can. God knows how much you can. He knows your ability. It's not about the amount. And it's not about the time. But it's about what you can do. That God has given all of us different abilities. Some have five talents. Some have two. Some have one. He's not demanding from you what he's demanding from me. What I can give, you can't give. What you can give, I can't give. But make sure that in all the places you can, to all the people you can, as long as you can, in the many ways as you can, through the many means that you can, as much as, people, as much as possible, do good to people. God bless you. It's time for us to take our offering.
in this series on Tuesdays, one of the days, I'll, I'll give you ideas on some of the, 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 the little and big act of kindness that you can do. How many of you have thought about wanting to go and you don't, you don't, you don't, sometimes you don't, you don't just know what to do. You just don't know what to do. Sometimes it's difficult. I'll help you. In this series, we shall look at some of the ways you can show people love. Hallelujah. Lift up your offerings to the Lord. Father, we thank you for always giving to us. It's always a privilege and a joy to give back unto you, who is our source. We bless every honor you for this word. We thank you that we are not just hearers, but we are doers as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Please bring your offering from the back. For all our online viewers, those who join us via Facebook and YouTube and all the other social media platforms, thank you so much for joining us. We believe that you have been blessed by this service and this sermon. We encourage you to visit our website and the, our Facebook and other social media handles for more about the church. We'll be more than happy to get interactive with you from any part of the world you are joining.